We've got a Falcons mock draft with some trades coming your way on today's edition of Falcons Today by Chat Sports. Matthew Peterson here getting you guys ready before the NFL draft, which can you believe is less than two weeks away, just like a week and a half away. So I thought on today's show we could look at some mock drafts with trades or mock draft with trades just to give you a sense of what it could look like if Atlanta moved back because if you see Will Levis or Anthony Richardson just fall from five to six to seven to eight, you might see a team pick up the phone, and if the Falcons aren't interested in taking a quarterback, they'd be a prime candidate to move back and stockpile some more picks. So with that, let's jump into our first trade we made in this mock draft. I've got the Falcons and the Titans striking a deal. There's been some mock drafts out there with Tennessee jumping up to draft Anthony Richardson or Will Levis. So in this mock draft trade, I've got Atlanta and Tennessee swapping first-round picks. So the Falcons go from 8 to 11 and also swapping second round pick or second and a third. So Atlanta turns in their third round pick number 75 and moves up to pick 41. So not, neither team loses any picks. Just Atlanta falls back a little bit in round two, in round one, excuse me, but a big jump from round three into round number two. I think that's about fair for only moving back three spots. So with that trade, I also want to parlay this trade in here. So I made some more trades. I got a little trade happy with it. And here's what I did. So I moved back once again from 11 to 17 because the Steelers want Paris Johnson Jr. badly from Ohio State. Now to move back from 11 to 17, I picked up an additional second and fourth and blasted a seventh into the sun. You might be able to get a future first from 11 to 17. That's right there on the border for garnishing a first-round pick in the future, moving back six spots. But for now, we'll just go with picks this year to maximize the fun in this year's mock draft. So do you like the trades that we made? Two trade backs, picking up some extra second-round picks, a fourth-round pick, sending a seventh into the sun. Who gives a shit? Let me know what you think down below. Now, moving back twice at pick 17, I am going to go with Nolan Smith, the edge rusher out of Georgia. This easily could be the pick for the Falcons at number eight. So to get the guy you were thinking at eight at 17 and pick up additional second round picks along the way, that is some wizardry from Terry Fontenot. So if you want Nolan Smith, then trade back and get him rather than reaching a little bit at eight. Hoping that he works out because no one's a proven commodity. And Nolan Smith, I wouldn't say is as foolproof as they come, in my opinion. Now, the former Georgia Bulldog, we all know, had his season cut short last season due to a pec injury. But the guy is just a football player. I don't know how else I can put this. He is a football player. He knows what to do on the field. He is the heart and soul of that Georgia defense. And the Falcons sort of need that in the middle of their defense. They need a field general, right? They need a guy coming in and calling the shots in the middle of the defense, and that could be Nolan Smith. And we also know it's the worst-kept secret in the NFL. The Falcons need edge rushers badly. So Nolan Smith could be their guy. Moving on to our second-round pick, I'm going to go with offensive lineman out of TCU. This is Steve Avila. So I think it's a bit early for Avila, but there's not a ton of good Day two interior offensive lineman out there. It's not a fun pick, and I get that, right? You want second round picks to be splash contributors and skilled players, but this is a pick of need, which looking back at it, maybe I'd rather go just pure best player available, but Avila, I think, is still a very good pick for Atlanta because when you look at this offensive line, if you find yourself a permanent left guard in this draft, and Drew Dahlman is him, and Caleb McGarry proves that he was not a one-hit wonder, and it's an absolute steal of a contract you gave him? Man, this is an awesome offensive line for Atlanta for the next two to three seasons. Now, Avila for the TCU Horn Frogs last year, no sacks allowed, two hits, nine hurries. His PFF run grade needs some tender love and care, 66.6, but that's something that the offensive line coach in Atlanta can work on with him. So that is my first pick in the second round. Let's move on to our second pick. We picked this one over the previous one. I can't remember from a trade, and now we're going to get the splash guy. 
Let's go get Jalen Hyatt out of Tennessee. The Belenikoff winner for the Volunteers last year. The best wide receiver in all of the land. He torched Alabama to the tune of five touchdowns. If anyone ever scores five touchdowns against Nick Saban, that should be at worst a second-round draft pick. Now, last year for the Vols, 1,200 yards and 15 touchdowns. He was a bit of a boomer bust type of receiver. He either went off for a 60-yard touchdown, or you might not have seen him for a couple plays. He didn't have a very extensive route tree, which is something that he needs to work on, but he is an absolute burner who is going to work on the outside. And with Drake London as your primary X and Hyatt to sort of stretch the field, that is going to be a very fun wide receiver duo for Desmond Ritter to work with, and for all of us to learn if Desmond Ritter is the guy. Now, Hyatt's got some wheels. He ran a 4-4-40. Honestly, I kind of like that he didn't go any faster because the faster the 40 you run, there's a point where it's like, well, now you're in the John Ross territory where you're just a track star. You're not a football player. Now, he's right in that sweet spot right there. I love Hyatt really for any team in the second round. Now, before we get to the rest of our mock draft today, we are on the road to 12,000 subscribers. We are always adding more. So help us get to that milestone before the NFL draft and join one of the fastest growing Falcons YouTube communities out there. Can you believe it? We've got another second round pick. And this one is Tyreek Stevenson, the nasty physical corner out of the U at pick 49. So a little background on Stevenson. First, I think Atlanta needs to get a corner on day two because Hayward is on a one-year con or one year left on his contract. He is an older veteran. This is surely going to be his last year for Atlanta. You got to start thinking ahead here, okay? GMs love to get their whole roster on a whiteboard, and then they color code it in a bunch of ways. One of the ways is who's got one year left on their contract? That way I can draft their replacement now so that next year, I'm not drafting a rookie who has to start, but instead someone who's got a year of experience and can step into that role. That could be Stevenson. Now, for the Hurricanes last year, 353 yards allowed in 11 games and three touchdowns. The guy's a nasty physical corner. Seven pass breakups and two interceptions. When you look at his RAS, which is just basically football porn for draft gurus out there, you're looking for green, as I like to say. We've got plenty of it. So from that criteria, it checks the box. Stevenson can be a press route, a press corner on the outside. You could also see if he can move inside to the nickel, but usually in day two, you're not drafting corners to be on the inside. You're looking for outside corners. And for that reason, Stevenson and A.J. Terrell, uh, there's a lot to be excited about. Let's get on to our fourth round pick. Remember, we moved on from our third to get the additional second from Tennessee. And I'm going to go with edge rusher out of Louisville. This is Yaya Diaby. He is a physical specimen. If you guys have watched previous videos before, you know that I really hate the NFL draft cliches of, he's a great athlete, awesome size. The guy is an absolute freak, and I don't like using that term lightly when it comes to the NFL draft, but look at what Diaby did last season for Louisville. 37 tackles, 14 tackles for loss, 9 sacks, and 2 pass breakups, and just look at him right there. Just standing amongst those Pitt Panthers players, making them look like little cats. So I am all in on adding all the pass rushers. To be honest with you, if Atlanta used every single pick in this draft on pass rushers just to finally get the position down for the first time in a long time since, I don't know, John Abraham or one season of Vic Beasley, I really wouldn't be all upset about that. I'd be a little proud that they, you know, we're just openly admitting we suck at adding pass rushers, so we're going to spread all of our chips on pass rushers and hope that one or two of them work out. So I am all in on adding all the edge rushers in this draft. Next fourth round pick, this is Kobe Turner, defensive tackle from Wake Forest. So now we're looking to give Grady Jarrett something to work with on the inside. And Kobe Turner is a very good interior defensive lineman who's got a knack for getting into the backfield. Last year for the Demon Deacons, 38 tackles, 10 tackles for loss, two sacks, 
two forced fumbles. So Turner and alongside Calais Campbell, and he can learn from him. That's a pretty good rotation to go along with it. I think this could be a fun pick for the Falcons. Now, who do you think is your draft sleeper, right? Who is someone that maybe everyone else is not looking at? And this is a guy that you could think, you know what? I know everyone else isn't looking at him, but we should be giving him a good hard look. Moving on to our next fourth round pick. This is Juice Scruggs. And in fact, we can parlay even our next seventh round. Oh, no, we'll keep it right here. Juice Scruggs out of Penn State, the center for the Nittany Lions. Yeah, the Falcons have a lot of great things going on their offensive line. We got to wait and see if Drew Dahlman is truly the future at this position. He showed a lot to be optimistic about last year, but I do think adding some competition is healthy and necessary for the center position, and Drew, Drew Scruggs from Penn State could be that guy. Here are his PFF grades last season, 71.5 overall, 73.6 pass blocking, 69 nice run blocking grade. He has sort of been the Cinderella, if you will, of interior offensive linemen in day three. So you have him compete with Dahlman to start and figure out who is going to be this team's uh, starting center this year and beyond. You can't just hand jobs over in the NFL. You need to have some competition. I hate seventh round picks. They never amount to anything essentially. But hey, let's go with fun names. How about Jake Bobo? Wide receiver out of UCLA. He just seems like a fun special teamer, if I'm being honest with you. Jake Bobo is probably a fun guy in the locker room. Uh, Stats-wise, does it really matter? Because they're seventh-round picks, no offense. But he had 817 yards and seven touchdowns last season for the Bruins. In round seven, you are looking for special teamers. Guys who want to get physical and nasty in practice, go the extra mile, and have a lot of endurance and can run up and down the field. That is Bobo. Plus, it's a fun name to say. Let's go Bobo. All right, moving on to our final pick in this mock draft. It is Leonard Taylor, tight end out of Cincinnati. This is someone who's got some high upside, but again, what are we looking for, everyone? Three, two, one, special teamers. And Leonard Taylor could be that type of player, a good depth piece. And hey, unfortunately, with Kyle Pitts, you might need some extra services at that spot early on in the season. 170 yards and two touchdowns last season for Cincinnati. So grade our mock draft for us. A, B, C, D, or F. What mock draft grade would you give us? We moved back a bunch, so I get it. There was no fun pick at number eight. But if you wanted Nolan Smith, this is your dream. Because you get Nolan Smith and you get a bunch of second round picks as a result of moving back. So I'm going to give myself a little B. I'm going to go solid B. You know, can't stroke your ego too much, but I think it's a B draft. Make sure to subscribe if you have not already. We're going to keep you guys in the loop on all things Atlanta Falcons. We'll sign off and see everyone later.